In today's lecture, we will see the part 1 of CSMA, which is Carrier Sense Multiple Access. As usual, we will start the session with the outcomes. In today's session, we have 4 outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of this session, the learner will be able to. Outcome number 1, we will know the various multiple access protocols. Outcome number 2, we will understand CSMA protocol. Outcome number 3, we will know the types of CSMA. And outcome number 4, the last outcome, we will understand the behavior of the first three persistent methods. Before we dive into the CSMA protocol, we will see the various multiple access mechanisms. The various multiple access protocols or mechanisms are categorized as random access protocols, controlled access protocols and channelization protocols. Already we have seen about the Aloha, Pure Aloha and the Slotted Aloha in the previous lectures. Now we will see the next random access method the CSMA, which is Carrier Sense Multiple Access. Let's dive into the topic of the day, the CSMA protocol. CSMA stands for Carrier Sense Multiple Access. Here, carrier means the channel or the medium. So, we are going to sense the carrier. Why we are going to sense the carrier? Because this carrier or the medium is a shared medium. So, any station can place their data at any time. What happens if two or more stations places their data at the same time on the shared medium? It leads to collision. So, we are going to sense the carrier before we transmit the data. To minimize the chance of collision and therefore increase the performance, the CSA method was developed. Let's see what's the principle of CSMA. The principle of CSMA is sense before transmit. In other words, listen before talk. Say, this is the node which is going to send the data on the shared medium. And this is going to be the receiver. This sender wants to place the frame. The problem is, when this node, without sensing the status of this channel, if it directly places its frame on the medium, it may lead to collision because there are other nodes which may also use this common channel. So, we are required to sense before transmit. And what about the status of the carrier? The carrier may be busy or the carrier may be idle. What do you mean by carrier is busy? It means the transmission is taking place. Suppose our station is going to send some data on the shared medium and it is finding that the carrier is busy. What does it mean? It means the transmission is already taking place. Somebody else is using the channel. In case if the carrier is idle, it means no transmission currently taking place. Our station can involve in data transmission. So, we are going to reduce the possibility of collision. But still, collision exists. The possibility of collision still exists because of propagation delay. So, let's assume that this node has placed its frame. And this frame is obviously on the way. What this node does, it senses the channel and it finds it is free. Actually, the data is on the way, it has not reached this place. But this node is sensing this place and it is finding the channel is free. And what this station will do? Immediately, it will place its frame. And obviously, this frame and this frame will collide with each other. And that is what it is mentioned as the possibility of collision still exists because of propagation delay. If the distance between the sender and the receiver is very high, obviously the propagation delay is going to be high. So that time it may lead to collision. So a station may sense the medium and find it idle only because the first bit sent by another station has not been received. Now let's see the various types of CSMA. Basically we have four types of CSMA, one persistent CSMA, P persistent CSMA, non persistent CSMA, and O persistent CSMA. And the modified protocols are CSMA CD, which is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection, and CSMA CA, which is carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. Let's see the first type, the one persistent CSMA. In one persistent CSMA, before sending the data, the station first listens to the channel to see if anyone else is transmitting the data at that moment. And this is obvious. If any station wants to transmit their data, it has to first listen to the channel to know whether the channel is busy or free. If it is free, it will immediately transmit. Else, it has to wait till the channel becomes free. So, if the channel is idle, obviously the station transmits a frame. But if the channel is busy, then it senses the transmission medium continuously. This is very, very important. 
This mode, that is this one persistent CSMA, it senses the transmission mode continuously until it becomes idle. For example, for every one second, it is continuously checking the channel, thus to know whether the channel has become free. Now we will see why it is called as one persistent CSMA. Since the station transmits the frame with the probability of one, when the carrier or channel is idle, this scheme of CSMA is called as one persistent CSMA because it is continuously checking the transmission medium. When it finds the transmission medium is idle, immediately that station transmits the frame. Since it is transmitting at the probability of one, it is called as one persistent CSMA. Already I mentioned one point, the propagation delay has an important effect on the performance of this protocol. Let me elaborate about this point now. The longer the propagation delay, the more important this effect becomes and worse the performance of the protocol. Let's see. Suppose if this is the sender and this is the receiver and this is the channel or the propagation medium and if this is a very big medium, what is the problem? When this sender has placed its frame and this frame is on the way and this node senses that it is free and it will transmit. What happens? The frame that was sent by this node and the frame that was sent by this node will collide with each other. When we have a smaller propagation delay, then this effect is minimized to some extent. But when we have a propagation delay which is very high, then the performance of the one persistent CSMA protocol is very bad. We are done with the CSMA protocol and the types of protocol. We have also seen the first type of protocol which is one persistent protocol. Now let's move on to the second type which is non-persistent protocol. In non-persistent protocol, before sending, a station senses the channel. If no one else is sending, the station begins doing so itself. And this is obvious. When the node is sensing that the channel is free, it immediately forwards the frame or it immediately transmits the frame. Then how does it differ from one persistent CSMA? However, if the channel is already in use, the station does not continually sense. In one persistent CSMA, the station continuously senses the channel. But here, the station does not continually sense it for the purpose of seizing it immediately upon detecting the end of the previous transmission. If it continuously checks, it will come to know immediately that the channel has become free when it is free. But when it does not continually check the channel, the previous transmission might have already been completed, the channel is still free, but this might have not been noticed by the station that the channel is free. Because it is not continuously checking, it is randomly checking. We will understand about this point when we see the behavior of the three persistent methods. Since it is not continually sensing, it waits for a random period of time. It means, say, a station wants to send a frame. It senses the channel. If it is busy, it will not continually check. Rather, it will wait for a random period of time. So it waits for a random period of time and then repeats the algorithm. Consequently, this algorithm leads to better channel utilization, but longer delays than one persistent CSMA. Since one persistent CSMA is continuously checking the channel, so delays will not be high in one persistent CSMA. And that's the problem of non-persistent CSMA. We will move on to the third type, which is P-persistent CSMA. P-persistent CSMA applies to slotted channels. Very important point is this slotted channels. In slotted channels, every node will send only when it gets its time slot. When a station becomes ready to send, it senses the channel. And then if it is idle, it will transmit at the probability P. Why it is transmitting at the probability P? If the station has a node to send, it will sense the channel. If the channel is also free, but it has to check for one more condition whether that time slot is allotted for that station. If that time slot is for that station, then only it can send. There are chances the station may have a frame and the channel is also free, but that's not the time slot allotted to that station. So that station cannot transmit the frame that time because it has to wait for its time slot. With a probability of 1 minus p, it differs until the next slot because when the station is idle, it transmits with the probability p. It is not immediately transmitting. So with a probability of q, which is 1 minus p, it differs until the next slot. It has to check whether the time slot is for that station in order to transmit. If that slot is also idle, it either transmits or differs again with the probabilities of P and Q. So this process is repeated until either the frame has been transmitted or another station has begun transmitting. There is a big problem with this. 
In the latter case, the unlucky station acts as if there had been a collision, that is, it waits a random time and starts again. Since it is waiting a random time and it is starting again, it seems like a collision period. If the station initially senses the channel busy, it waits for the next slot and applies the above algorithm. So here, the station has to check for the channel and the station also has to check for the time slot. So this is P persistent CSMA. Let's now see the behavior of one persistent, non persistent, and p persistent CSMA. Here is the comparison of the behaviors. This is one persistent. Let's say this channel is busy. So, what this protocol will do? It is continuously sensing the channel. Whenever the channel is becoming free, say here the channel is becoming free. So, it will be immediately getting notified about this. Why? Because it is continuously checking. Whereas in non persistent, it will check for the status of the channel. In this case, the channel is busy. So, what it will do? It will not continually check. Rather, it will wait for a random period of time and it will check. Again, if it finds the channel is busy, it will be randomly waiting for a period of time. So, if you observe, this wait is smaller and this wait is bigger. Why? Because this waiting time is random. And also, if you observe, this is the time where the channel is becoming free. But this protocol is not getting notified about this because it is not continually checking. So, randomly it will check and then if it finds at that time only, it will send. In one persistent, it is continuously checking and here it is randomly checking. Now, coming to the third type which is P persistent, if it is busy, it will be continuously checking and when, when it finds the channel to be free, it has to check whether this time slot is for that channel. So, the probability outcome does not allow transmission because each time slot is given for each station. So far, we have dealt with the three persistent methods and the behavior. Let's now see the last persistent method which is the O persistent method. In O persistent method, each node is assigned a transmission order by a supervisory node. So here is a supervisory node and this supervisory node will take care of the transmission order among the stations involved in the transmission so that collisions are handled effectively. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the various multiple access protocols. We understood the CSMA protocol. We know the types of CSMA protocol and we also understood the behavior of three persistent methods. They are one persistent, non persistent and p persistent methods. I hope you enjoyed the lecture and thank you for watching.